engine, uh, start to finish. It's going to be a detailed video, show you a lot of stuff. I'm going to try and keep it as short as possible, but there's a lot that goes into it. I got the engine, engine bracket, uh, everything else I need here. So let's get right into it and uh, show you how to install the engine. Okay, so the very, very first thing you're going to want to do when you, uh, before you really go too far at all, it's the bottom of your engine. You're going to have four holes, which is going to mount the engine to your mounting plate. First thing you're going to want to do, because I have not had a kit yet where uh, the bolts were right, so the Allen bolt here, even with the lock washer on there, make sure you screw them in just by hand to begin with to see how far down they go. Ultimately, they should go all the way, but as you see with this one, you have about, uh, I'd say, quarter to almost three-eighths of an inch that it's not going in. Uh, this is very, very soft metal, so if you want to take a wrench and try and uh, really crank down on it, you're just going to strip it and you're going to be out an engine. So, in a case like this, now keep in mind there will be the mounting bracket, which is about... I'd say under an eighth of an inch thick. So it's still gonna have some play in here. So we're gonna add a couple washers and then uh, Loctite to make up the difference. Uh, another way you can do it is cut it down. Uh, you could put it in a vise and then take a hacksaw and cut this bolt down to size. Cut about maybe uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch off of it and that'll be fine too. So either way. Okay, next is gonna be the mounting bracket for the engine that goes onto the bike. Uh, you'll remember this from one of my past videos where I took this, I painted this, and then also I had a different video where I used the liquid steel and I uh, put that over the bolts. That way you don't have to worry about trying to fit a wrench in here and get these to stay. You'll just tighten the, the nut down right on it and the bolt will stay in place. So what I have learned from my previous builds is the mounting plate. You do have slots here so you have a little bit of lateral adjustment for your engine to align with the chain and the rear sprocket. What I've learned from all my builds is that the engine for me on this particular bike, every bike's going to be different, but for me, uh, my, my engine's all the way over to the left. Now, my brackets, more than likely, once I put everything together, it's going to be slid to where the bottom of the bracket, unfortunately, is going to be covering the holes uh, for the to mount the engine to. Which means I got to do things a little bit a little backwards here. I'm going to have to mount the engine to the plate first, and then put the brackets in place. As you can see, I didn't repaint this yet. I'm just going to put everything together, mock it up, make sure everything fits the way I need it to, and then I'll tear it down paint it and put everything back together once I know uh, everything fits the way I want it to. Okay, whenever you're putting a motorized bike together, you're obviously going to have a lot of vibration from the engine on there. So I am going to show you a way to decrease the vibration a little bit in the way I assemble things and uh, put the engine on. However, no matter what, you're still going to have some vibration, uh, quite a bit actually. So, for the engine, because their design puts the bolts in such an unbelievably concealed place, it's not easy if something were to fall apart or get loose to get those things back together. You basically have to take the whole bracket apart, the engine off the bracket to access it. So, for once I do put the engine together for the final time, I'll use red, which is going to really lock it in good. And then for everything else, uh, I'm going to use a blue one, which is still going to lock it in. I've never had an issue, uh, but you can still obviously take the bolt out if you need to. Just an extra measure. It only costs, I think it was seven bucks for both of them, and uh, it's really going to help out a lot. Otherwise, you're going to lose a lot of bolts, which could be either frustrating and or dangerous. Okay, so I'm just finishing putting in the last bolt here to hold the mounting plate to the bottom of the engine. Okay, now that I got all the bolts in, attaching the bracket to the engine, now I'm going to put in the pieces that go around the frame that attach to the mounting bracket. Keep in mind this engine is upside down to give you a bottom view of the bracket. So 
these will slide right over and then you just put the bolts in from the side to attach them in and these will have plenty of room for travel uh, depending on what kind of frame you have. Always keep in mind the lower you put your engine the better, lower center of gravity is going to give you better control and better handling on your bike. Okay, now I got those on. Okay, now if you remember in my earlier video, I only had these nuts on here to pull the bolt as far out as possible so I could keep the head of the bolt as close to this bracket as possible so there's no play in there at all. So now, I can just take these nuts off so we can get the proper brackets on there when we put it around the frame. As you can see, and there wasn't a lot of pressure on here yet, but I didn't need to hold the other end to take the nuts off, which is thanks to that liquid steel. Okay, we got all that hardware off, so now this can go right onto the bike here soon, just like this. You want to leave these loose because you're going to want some play in there depending on how your frame is designed, uh, which we'll get into. I'll show you where that's going to come in handy. Okay, so we're just about to start getting into the prep work for mounting the engine on the bike. And the main thing you want to do with a four-stroke engine is make sure that engine is level. So just park your bike on a level surface and go off there and then keep the bracket level. Uh, that's one thing about four strokes that are different from two strokes. Two strokes you can mount at almost any angle. Four strokes because they have the, uh, the separate oil in there, it has to be level so it can get a consistent, uh, have consist consistent access to the oil and lubricate the engine properly. If it's on an angle, it may not be in a good spot to get that oil up into the engine and you're going to blow your engine. Okay, remember in the past video for the gas tank hack, I used an uh, inner tube for a tire to make a new gasket for the gas cap. I like to use everything I get and make the most out of it, so I'm actually going to be using the same inner tube that we used for the gas tank hack and use it for the engine install as well. Okay, so when you're mounting your engine, you're going to have two points where that bracket is going to mount to. You're going to be attaching it to this tube and also this tube here. So what I want to do, number one, I don't want to scratch up my frame and having that bracket there. If I scratch that up, it's going to start rusting and then you're going to see that rust stain that's going to be dripping down and it's just going to not be the best. So that's number one reason I'm doing the inner tube. And then also, I'm also doing it to cut down on vibration a little bit. Now, I emphasize a little bit because don't expect it to uh, kill the vibration completely and don't expect it to make uh, a huge difference on there. You, the more rubber you put on there, obviously the more vibration you're going to cut down on. However, the more you build this up and the more layers you have, the more it's going to allow your engine to rock and move. So you don't want to keep on building up so much so that you get to that point where your engine's just moving all around. It's going to throw your chain alignment off, which is, as I mentioned many times before, not a good thing. So what I'm going to do is just to get the dimension here, I'm just going to wrap it around this way so I can get a little bit of an idea. And then cut that length off, and then take it and cut it lengthwise like this, just like I did for the gas cap. On the inner part of the tube, and it's got uh, like a powdery substance on it, almost like uh, uh, talcum powder or something like that, so it's going to offer you a little bit of a slip to it versus this side, which is going to be really grippy. So you put fat on the frame side, so that allows you to kind of move it up and down and adjust it when you're installing the engine. Another thing too is when you wrap it around, we're going to make sure our rubber doesn't overlap. If it overlaps, it's going to have a ridge on here and that may throw off how the engine uh, bracket mounts to the frame. So what we're going to do is we're just going to adjust it a little bit, cut a little bit off to make sure that we don't have a seam on there. Okay, so I got my 
uh, two layers of inner tube wrapped around the frame. I do have some tape on there just to hold them. Yet, with putting that powder side down so the in, inside of the inner tube towards the frame, even though they're wrapped on there pretty tight, I can still slide them uh, to adjust for when the bracket goes on. This is going to be a tricky part. So, just going to kind of have to work it in carefully, not see a scratch or frame. And one thing you really want to do, like I mentioned before, you do want to keep it lower. With a smaller sprocket on here, that's going to give us a little bit of extra room. Uh, my chain card is going to have to be modified a little bit since it was made for the large chain wheel, so it usually sits up here. But later on, that will be one of the last steps, I'll modify the chain guard so it sits down lower. One thing you do want to do though, is you want to make sure for your air cover here, is you want to give a little bit of space in between here, at least try to, and uh, make sure that you have enough room to take this cover off. Uh, it's probably one of the things I'm going to be modifying anyways, but if you're going to keep this cover on here, make sure that it's, uh, it's on there the right way. When you're tightening your bolts on, the, on the, each side of the bracket, make sure you tighten them evenly. So this one you have a little bit of a thread sticking out from the bolt, this one you don't. So take a few turns on one, then go to the other one so it's pulling everything together even. Not so you have one bracket that has a quarter inch gap on this side and this one's going to have a three quarters of an inch gap on that down. side. Tighten them down and uh, I'm within a degree as far as level. Like I said before, you want to you wanna level with a four stroke engine but it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Like this is right on the border of being perfect, which didn't take me as long as what I thought it was. Uh, so that's, that's absolutely perfect just the way it is. As you notice here, like I mentioned before, you have plenty of space to take your air filter cover off and service your air filter. So that just Unhooks. Even with that space, even though it would look, there's quite a bit of space in there, it's still tight, so you definitely want this gap on the back to work with that. And then also, you also have your oil filler plug here and your oil drain plug. So the more room you have in between here to get a wrench in here and get a bottle of oil and that in there, better. You also got your choke lever up here, so I got plenty of room up here on top to work that. And then I also have plenty of room up here for heat, plenty of room in the front here, so pretty much got all my bases covered here. Another thing I want to point out too is you're not just leveling the engine the way I talked about in the first part of the video, you're also leveling the engine uh, this way as well. So you don't want your engine tilted one way or the other. So as you're tightening it, you also got to pay attention to the level of your engine this way as well. All right, everyone, thank you very much for watching another video. Hope you enjoyed it. Lots more to come. Uh, if you want to email me, any questions, anything like that, sinistercustomcycles at gmail.com. Also, check out the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash sccmn. Don't forget to like and share this channel and also the Facebook page. And also I'm going to post a link up here somewhere on either side of me uh, for my new channel that I did, I uh, just opened up last week. And uh, check out the video we did for uh, feeding the homeless on Thanksgiving weekend. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.